Okay, now that we've gone through routing, I think it'd be good to talk about modulation. So modulation takes up the center of your screen here. And there are so many things within Alchemy that can be modulated. It's really crazy. But we've got this nice little saw wave going on up here. So let's continue with it. I'm going to click on pan. Now when I click on the pan knob, you see that it turned blue. Well, that means that this modulation section is now looking at that pan knob. The modulation section dynamically changes depending on which knob has been selected for modulation. So right now it's pan A, and if I want to assign a modulator to pan A, all I do is turn the target on, and then I click to get a list of all the different modulators that I can use. So right now there's an LFO that's been created for me, LFO1, and I'll assign that. So now LFO1 is affecting pan. You can tell when something is being modulated because it has an orange ring around it. Depth is up all the way, so that means that it's going to swing all the way from left to right. So when I pull back on depth, you can see that it gets smaller. If I pull it up, it gets larger, showing its influence over that control. Now to the right here, here's my LFO. Right underneath where it says LFO, it says 1. That means we're looking at LFO 1, the LFO that I assigned to panning. Let's say that I go over to tuning and I click on it, turn its target on, go to my modulation sources, and there's LFO 1, that's the one that we just used, but maybe I want to make a different LFO for pitch. So I'll choose a new LFO. Once I've done that, under the LFO tab, you see it says 2. So now we have LFO2 and LFO1. LFO2 right now is dedicated to tuning, and LFO1 is dedicated to panning. So let's go back over to LFO2 under tuning, and I can choose an LFO shape. So if I go to complex, I can choose something like pattern. The LFOs are really crazy. There are over 100 LFO shapes, and they can either be bipolar, which means that they swing both positive and negative, or unipolar, which means that they only go positive from the parameter. So if I choose bipolar, you can see that my tuning is up the center, and it's going to swing both up and down in pitch. And if I deselect bipolar, then it's only going to go up. So it only has control over pitching up. So that's basically how you assign modulation. So if I went over to another source, if I turn another source on, and I'll click on source B, and let's say I turn on source B's filter, I can select its cutoff, turn on the target, and use something like an envelope. So there's the envelope. I can solo the source, and then if I hold a note, I can see the influence of that envelope over the filter. Now I'll turn the depth down. Pull my breakpoints over. Now that's one ADSR envelope, but guess what? If I wanted to, if I don't like that one or I'm using that somewhere else, I just make a new one. So it's pretty crazy. There's a intense amount of modulation that you can apply to any part of this instrument and you can have modulators affecting modulators as well, which is really crazy. But since we're doing a general flyover, I don't wanna to get too bogged down in how we do our modulation. But each place that you can do modulation, such as panning or tuning or volume, you can have up to 16 modulation sources that are affecting just that one knob, which is pretty insane. Let's check out these modulation sources and see how we can use them to control other parameters.